All right, so the first one is we're going to be sending stuff from Elm to JavaScript. Um, so to do this, uh, we've already added our port module up at the top here, which means that we are now allowed to use ports in this module. So we're going to say port, and again, uh, we have to make sure that our port names match up with uh, what we're doing on the JavaScript side. So because on the JavaScript side we are subscribing to uh, store session, that means our port on the Elm side also needs to be called store session. So store session is going to have a type that pretty much matches this one right here, conveniently. Um, so it's going to accept a maybe string, and then it's going to return a command message. Now, ordinarily, this would be where we'd implement the, the body of this uh, if it were a, a normal function, but this is a port, which means that we don't actually need to, uh, to do anything else. Elm's just going to generate the implementation for us. Um, so here, inside this function, which is being called elsewhere in the code, uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to hand off directly to the port. So we're going to say store session, uh, maybe authentication token, and that's it. So that should compile. Oops, we want to be back in part 9. Okay, that compiled, and uh, so we will see if it actually works. Uh, oh, I guess we should demonstrate the uh, lack of it working. Uh, actually, now with half of it implemented, it's going to partially work. So maybe not. We'll, uh, we'll just come back and see the entire thing work uh, momentarily. Okay, um, so that's the command side, and then on the subscription side, uh, we're going to receive session from JavaScript. Um, this is going to give us uh, a function which takes a value. Now, this, uh, this value type refers to a JSON value, which is to say it's some JSON that we have not yet decoded. It's uh, not in a string form, but rather it's in sort of uh, like a raw JavaScript object that needs to be decoded before we can do something useful with it. But at this point, it's just sort of uh, undecoded and uh, something that's just passing through our program. Um, so uh, in order to write a port for this, uh, we're going to use a similar tactic to what we did last time. Um, we're going to, again, go make sure that we use the same name as what we did in JavaScript, which is to say on session change. And then it's going to take as its first argument uh, a function that converts this incoming value to a message and then returns a sub message. So I can say on session change, passing to message, and that should compile no problem. Oh, no, it did not. Uh. Oh, <laughs> right, I can't just put a type definition and have it work. I actually need to use the port keyword, otherwise it looks like I'm just writing a weird function that I didn't actually define. Okay, thanks, compiler. So, based on that, I should now theoretically be able to sign out, sign up for a new account, and actually let's, um, let's put some, uh, some console logs in here so we can actually see what's going on as we're, uh, we're, we're doing this stuff. So inside of here, inside store session, I'm going to say console.log, got a new session, new session, and then uh, when we actually set the session, in other words, uh, this is going to be sent into Elm through a port, we can say um, session changed, and uh, I don't need to recompile because that's just raw HTML, um, but this email and this username, I have an extremely secure password because not even I know it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see that. Oh, by the way, this is a little warning. Uh, compiled in dev mode, follow this advice for uh, better performance and smaller assets, which is basically telling us here's how you can uh, enable the optimize flag to get better assets. Okay, sure enough, we did in fact get a new session, which has some incredibly readable info here, and the session was changed, which uh, led us to being logged in. Excellent. And putting those things together, we now have successfully communicated from Elm to JavaScript and from JavaScript to Elm. And that's all there is to it. Questions? So the, the port takes a signature. Yes. Is that right? The port keyword, yes, uh, does expect only a signature. Yeah. That is odd for sure. That's that is odd for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, essentially it's code generation, right? It's the compiler saying, look, there's only one possible implementation for any given type, which is I'm going to send that thing to JavaScript. So it says, you know, I'm just going just gonna to implement it for you. Um, one other note, which is sort of outside of the scope of this workshop, um, there is one other way to do JavaScript interop with Elm, which is through custom elements, which are part of the web components spec. 
Um, we're not going to get into exactly how to do that, uh, but Luke Westby gave an awesome talk on, uh, on how to do this at Elm Europe. And he sort of like walks through the steps to do it. Um, basically, that's a use case where uh, you want to specifically embed some piece of JavaScript uh, inside your view. Like you have like a third party widget or something like that, like a date picker or what have you, and you want to just be able to drop it in the middle of your view. Um, this is a way that uh, uh, custom elements are a way that you can do that. So, not something we're going to cover here, but uh, if you're curious about that and that sounds like it fits your use case, I highly recommend checking out his talk, which we will link to.